when the question asked to identify, that, the question about that my example was about dams was an identify. It said identify two ben benefits of dams. You can do that in one sentence. Easy. Dams provide hydroelectric power and flood control, period. Move on to the next part. But a lot of times they don't ask that. And again, we'll look at some examples in a minute. A lot of times they ask you to describe, discuss, or explain. And I tell my kids, you cannot describe, discuss, or explain a dam in one sentence. You're going to more than that. And I tell the kids, okay, well, let's think in general. Maybe it would take three sentences. Sometimes it might take four or five. Other times maybe you can adequately get a whole description in two sentences. But if you think I need like three or four sentences, you're probably going to do a explain or describe or discuss answer. And then I say here, well, what if they ask me to identify and describe? Okay, well, now we need the one sentence for the identify and the three or four sentences for the describe. We're up to four or five sentences now. Just something to think about. I'm just going to interrupt for a second, Courtney. There's a question for clarification on the bulletin, just to confirm that there is, bulleting is not accepted because on other AP exams it is accepted. It is, uh, it is not accepted on our exam. Hmm. Do you have any idea? The question is why? It's just there are a it, it's the same thing as we're not allowed calculators on our exam, and some exams allow calculators. It's all just dependent on the test, the test development committee, and the teacher reader. Okay. And I know that's confusing to kids. My husband teaches macroeconomics, and they're taught not to write in sentences. They're supposed to, you know, write like almost just short answer letters, supply up man down or whatever whereas and so my kids get confused with that because they have him and they have me and they have to write complete sentences in mine not write complete sentences in his so that's just the that's the way it is any other questions um can someone do bullets but as long as they're writing in complete sentences yes if the bullet is a complete sentence that's fine they feel like they just want to put a bullet i teach my kids not to i think it's safer not to but essentially we need to start with a capital letter and end with a period very good. Okay, if the question asks for an environmental benefit, most of the time, and yes, there are exceptions to the rule, if you look at the rubric, every once in a while you'll find the exception. But I teach my kids, we don't want to hope for the exception. So you're going to write about animals, you're going to write about plants, soil, air, water, for whatever reason, they don't consider humans as part of the environment. So, and, and like I said, every once in a while you will see a human answer, but most of the time, no. So, for example, on that one last year, I graded one, and um, they had to, or the year before, I can't remember, but anyway, they had to say a benefit or, of something or other, and I think it was a warmer climate. And if the kids answered that, that you could grow more crops because it was an environmental benefit, we didn't give them points because crops are grown for humans or crops are grown to feed animals that humans are going to eat. And so crops was a human answer, not an environmental answer. So they have to talk something other than, and what I do in my class is if they give me a human answer, I will not give them credit for it on my test because the majority of the time they're not going to get it. Now, if it asks for a societal benefit, now you want to talk people. You want to talk people's happiness, people's jobs, people's family. We can go out and take a walk and enjoy nature or something about humans, human health, something. Um, when it does ask for human health, you want to make sure you talk about the body. And I tell my kids, obviously, if you know what human health effect it causes, they particularly love mercury and lead questions, Then, and it asks what does that do to the human body, then obviously you answer it. But if you don't know, maybe you have no idea, you don't remember, it's a chemical you've never heard of, I tell them to flip a coin. You don't leave it blank. You never want to leave one blank. Flip a coin between neurological damage and camps. Most of the time, any chemical out there will fall into one of those categories, and at least you're sitting at a 50-50 chance rather than leaving it blank because you didn't know. And like, for example, if the question was about mercury and you said cancer, you would, got, you would have flipped the coin wrong because no mercury causes the, the, the nervous, it's nervous system toxin. It doesn't cause cancer, or at least not on limb. Anyway, but at least that gives you a chance, you know, at least you're 50-50. I see a question about neurological damage. Did that that was weird. It like popped up in the middle of my screen. Do you see that, Cindy? Uh, yeah, neurological or what kind of damage? Yeah, like uh, it's a nervous system poison or toxin. So 
brain damage, birth defects in children, anything having to do with the brain is what lead and mercury are. I think the, are big. you had said there are, you know, if if they don't know, if they know nothing, there are two things to say: either neurological or or cancer or cancer. Okay, does that answer like the question? Pe- because pesticides are cancer, et cetera. Okay. Yep. Okay. The next one, okay, bullet number four and bullet number five here are the easiest. If they get this, I tell my kids, you know you can get this point. If it asks what, for bullet number four, what uh, an economic benefit or an economic cost, the kids need to talk about money and jobs. Obviously, it's probably not going to be an identify. It's probably going to be a describe or an explain. And so they need three or four sentences. So whatever it's about, then you say, well, it's going to, the economic benefit is it's going to provide, maybe it's a question about somewhere down at the coast. It's going to provide jobs. Maybe uh, the people in the fishing industry will have uh, work and they will be able to uh, get money that they can feed their family with, et cetera. Easy question. Always money and jobs. Now, if you look at the rubric, there will be 15 other things that are also accepted. But money and jobs is always accepted, so go with those two. Those are- um, and then the other easy, easy, easy question is when it asks, what can the government do? Again, there will be a list of 20 different things that are accepted, but always on the list is something about making a law, taxing, or educating. And again, they will need to explain this. So an example of that, would be, maybe they want to write about educating the public about global warming, let's just say. If they had simply said, the government should educate the public about global warming, period, they're not going to get the point because it's probably a describe or a discuss. Or an ex- and so they need to describe, discuss, or explain how, are, how is the government going to educate the public. Are they going to teach students in school about global warming? Are they going to make public service announcements on television about global warming? Are they going to provide leaflets to the town? Uh, you know, how are, how are they going to educate, you know, et cetera. And so make sure that they go past just the identify because it's probably not going to be an identify. There's a question okay. about asking if there, what about government subsidies? Would that be something to include? You could, yeah, that, like I said, there's probably 10 other things accepted, 15 other things accepted on the list. Those are just three that are always. So, yes, there's other things that would also be okay. What, some other hints, do not skip any part of the FRQ. Put something down. That's just a good test-taking hint because you can't get te- points taken away. You can only get points positive, and obviously, if you have no answer, you can get no points. Are you, did you um, move to six, Courtney? Because I'm only seeing five still. Uh-oh. Does that mean I'm gone again? Yeah, I moved to one and two. Are you seeing that? Oh, no. I think we froze. Okay, well. <laughs> I mean, you're still the presenter, though. No, I'm still seeing, yeah, and everybody's still seeing one through five, FRQ hints. You, your screen. It, it show, I went to the next slide, and it was number one. Um, do you want me to do the whole logging off thing again? It still shows that I'm on. Yeah, which I can't remember if last time it showed that you were, I mean, every, up oh, now, nope, you're off. It kicked you off. Yeah, it just threw me off. Okay. <laughs> Did you do something when when we were talking about the PowerPoint? Did you click on something or it just it happened to no, coincide? Okay, it just happened to coincide. Okay, well, let me um, start rebooting and answering questions. Yeah, so th- now is a good time if you have a question because this takes about, a minute and a half to two minutes for Courtney to get back into the WebEx. So if you have questions on what we've already covered for the FRQs or questions about the exam. Okay. 